Christians are supposed to be different than the rest of the world. Therefore, it can feel quite odd if you're a woman when a Christian man starts pursuing you. And that can happen for two reasons. First, you might just not be used to being pursued by a godly man. And compared to the men who have pursued you, his actions just seem really strange to you. Now, the other reason it might be odd when he pursues is because he is overcomplicating the situation out of a place of wanting to do everything perfect as a Christian. His heart's in the right place, but sometimes guys just get too in their head and, and overcomplicate the process. And then it comes off kind of weird and strange when they're pursuing the woman that they like. So whether it be because you're just not used to a godly man pursuing you or because he's overcomplicating it, here are four common things that may be strange when a godly man is pursuing and likes a woman. Number one, he's intentionally showing you less attention because he's working out his motives. Most Christians know the importance of motives. God looks at the heart, man just looks at the outside. God really cares about why we're doing the things that we're doing. Thus, when a Christian man is starting to like a woman and thinking about pursuing her, he's going to have a lot of internal reflection to make sure his motives are pure in this desire to pursue this woman. So, for example, if he's really attracted to her and if he really likes her romantically, he's going to worry that he's only being nice to her because he wants to be in a dating relationship with her. And to solve this dilemma where he feels like his motives may be false, sometimes he responds by just showing her less attention and almost just avoiding the situation in fear that he might be doing it for wrong reasons. And really, this is a misapplication. Once he gets time to really think about it and work it out with the Lord, he'll probably realize that A, God created romance, so it's not bad. He loves when his sons pursue his Christian daughters because that's what he wants. God made this whole thing, this, this marriage and relationships. So yeah, you can do it with bad motives, but it's not a bad motive to like a woman and want to be kind to her. And so just give a guy time. He's going to work it out with the Lord and see that this is actually good. Number two, he often word vomits, so to speak, once he does finally pursue you. So as I just discussed in point one, the guy is going to spend a lot of time internally weighing through this, thinking about you, thinking if he should pursue you, when he should pursue you, how he should do it, what his motives should be. And those, that's good. He wants to guard your heart. He wants to guard his heart. He wants to make sure he's not awakening love until it so desires as scripture commands. However, once he does finally feel released to pursue you, oftentimes there's a lot of pent up energy because he hasn't been able to do anything about his feelings. And so because he's thought about it so much, because he's put so much mental energy into it, once he finally does act, you're kind of surprised. And it sometimes feels like he just went from zero, not pursuing you at all, to 100 and he's like full blown pursuing you. And you're like, whoa, this is just too much. So my advice is to just know that this may have happened. You know, he's just a little excited because he's thought about it so much. Now, hopefully a mature man can kind of counteract that and know, well, I've had time to think about it. I need to give her time to warm up to this idea too. So hopefully he can do that. If not, just give it a little bit of time if you like him, but you just wish he was going slower because maybe over a few weeks or a few months, you guys will find that happy medium. He'll settle down and you'll warm up to the idea. Number three, he won't show any forms of physical affection or he may not even show any form of physical contact, even appropriate physical contact. So as Christians, of course, we know that sexual sin is wrong. We know that premarital sex is sin. We know that we should avoid sexual temptation whenever possible. However, from the woman's perspective, if she's just been pursued by worldly men all her life, it might actually feel weird and strange for this man to appear uninterested in her sexually and in a physical way. 
because again, she's just so used, she's been almost trained by the sinful culture to say, well, if a guy really likes you, he's gonna wanna sleep with you. And so when this guy doesn't do that, it's like, wow, what's wrong? Additionally, in fear of sending the wrong message or in fear of invoking sexual temptation in an unnecessary way, this man may even be extreme in not even contacting the woman's body at all in appropriate ways such as, you know, a hug or <laughs> uh, holding hands or something like that. Now, I'm not saying if you feel like that's a temptation to you, I'm not saying you should do that. You should follow your conscience and play it safe. But just know that he might not be touching you at all, not because he doesn't find you attractive, but because he finds you so attractive that he's worried it's going to be an, an unnecessary temptation to his flesh. And number four, a Christian man may misinterpret that you're not interested in him because he may have felt like you rejected him when you didn't even know he was trying to pursue you. You might be surprised that this guy you're interested in already feels like you don't like him. Perhaps he feels like he tried to subtly pursue you and got rejected, but you're like, that never happened. This man never tried to show interest in me. So for example, maybe he invited you to drive to church with him one Sunday and said, hey, I can swing by and pick you up. You live really close. And you politely declined because you said, well, I actually have to be there really early that morning. I'm helping with the children's ministry and we have a meeting. So I don't want to inconvenience you. Thank you for your offer, but I'll just drive myself. So maybe he thought, well, she doesn't want to be with, spend time with me. That was my attempt. It took him a lot of energy to work that up. And so you're like, I was just trying to be polite. I didn't want to waste his time. And there's this miscommunication. It'd be great if we could all just communicate perfectly and be on the same page, but human communication is rarely ever like that. So the point is, if you want a man to not pursue you, then definitely show him less attention when he shows you attention. Don't match his attention. You don't want to be rude but you just want to diminish that if you're not interested. And on the other hand, if you do want this man to pursue you, whenever he does something proactive, you want to at least match or maybe even exceed his positivity so that you send the right message. If you're not sure where the line is, I would say if you like the guy, just err on the side of being overly positive rather than overly passive. For more on this topic, you can watch my video right here called Four Practical Ways You Can Invite a Man to Pursue You. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. I hope this was helpful. Until next time, God bless.